I've spent a lot of my time and a lot of effort in my life wondering why when it comes to eating, it's so easy for some people to eat a moderate amount, whereas for other people, like this girl right here, I feel like I can just eat forever. <laughs> I actually like to call it my eat forever syndrome. <laughs> whereas some people, you know, they're, they're hungry, so they eat, they're full, so they stop eating, and it's all very logical and reasonable. But for me, I've always felt like there's like this like monster <laughs> inside my brain that's like, you know, making me want to eat even when I'm not physically hungry. And it really took about like 15 years of university level teaching <laughs> with respect to health and nutrition for me to figure out why that is. And the light bulb moment occurred when I was teaching my senior level class on obesity and we were covering the unit on appetite. And when I started digging into appetite, I'm like, oh my goodness, of course, <laughs> this is it. This is why some people have the desire to eat all the time. So through learning about how appetite is regulated, you know, I started to learn that there's a lot of things that we can't do anything about. But I don't like to focus on things we can't do anything about. I like to focus on things that we can actually do something about because that's a more empowering way to look at the world. So given all that scientific knowledge, plus a lot of like experience myself, you know, I've come up with a system called Appetite Mastery, which really focuses on the elements of our food consumption, our eating behaviors that we do have control over and that there is kind of like a scientific basis and like a logical basis too, to helping us feel more in control of our eating behavior. So we eat an amount that we feel good about. Now, appetite mastery isn't necessarily about losing weight, like it could be used for that if you want to. It's just more about like feeling in control, not obsessing about food anymore, not feeling like, you know, you don't understand your body and why it wants to eat sometimes and not eat other times. It's really about a feeling of security and safety and confidence in our body where we can like stop taking up space in our brain, <laughs> worrying about food and all that kind of stuff and feel really grounded in our, in our decisions with respect to food. So in this video, I want to give you kind of the foundations of this concept of appetite mastery. And in the following videos, I'll explain more of its components a little bit more. But I really wanted to give you an overview and I'm so excited to share this wisdom with you. If you do like this content, please do like it, comment, let me know what you think and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all the appetite mastery and body celebration and feel good vibes uh, of this channel. Uh, my name is Deanna Vidoya, by the way, if you don't know me, nice to meet you. So appetite mastery, like I mentioned, is about feeling in control. It's about knowing how your body works. It's about knowing how your appetite works and focusing on the things that are in your control in a way that's sustainable, that's realistic, and that's in line with your lifestyle. This isn't a diet. I don't you know, everyone should choose what they want to choose for their own uh, health management, but I'm not a big fan of diets myself. And what I do believe in is figuring out our own path and putting together our own toolkit and our own map that's going to help us feel in control of our food decisions and feel healthy and safe and, and happy <laughs> in our own bodies. Okay, so appetite mastery is about understanding how your appetite works and picking and choosing behavioral and cognitive skills and kind of heart-based skills too, they're gonna help you feel in control and masterful around your eating behavior. So before we get there, I do wanna explain what the term appetite means. So appetite is our desire to eat, okay? It could be based on a physiological need, hunger, like I need to eat, but appetite doesn't necessarily just involve the need to eat. It's sometimes the want to eat as well. So we all know this, <laughs> that sometimes we've just eaten dinner or we've, you know, eaten a full, full course and, you know, we hear about dessert or we smell something that smells really good or it's like 11 p.m. and we're bored. <laughs> we're not physically hungry, but we want to eat. Okay, that's appetite. 
Okay, like sometimes hunger plays into appetite, but appetite doesn't need hunger to, to help. <laughs> okay, and like, um, and because this is a video about appetite mastery, just a definition of mastery as well, this is just like feeling skillful, feeling like an expert about something. And I want you to feel like an expert about your own appetite so you can feel in control and masterful about that. So before we begin though, I do have to address one of the things we can't control. It is very clear from genetic research that one of the things that we see in individuals in larger bodies that is less common in individuals in smaller bodies is there seems to be a lot of genetic changes focused around uh, genes that are associated with appetite. So there are other genetic changes that can promote kind of larger bodies, but we really believe that one of the main ways genetics plays into larger bodies, obesity, etc., is because of appetite misregulation. Okay? And so if you've always felt like eating a lot, if you've always felt that it takes a lot longer for you to feel full and you have a harder time knowing when you're full, part of that might actually be due to your genetics. Okay, it can be due to other things as well, but I just need to say that and get it out of the way. And this is one of the reasons why it's harder for some people than other people. That said, there's nothing we can do about our genetics. It's kind of set in stone. Instead of looking at genetics as something disempowering that makes you feel like, mm, <laughs> oh, there's nothing I can do about it. This sucks. <laughs> you know, I don't want you to get stuck on that. I want you to focus on what you can control. Okay, let's focus on what we can control and pick behaviors that align with how you want to feel and how you want to live your life. Because there are appetite-related behaviors that are in your control. But as I go through kind of the main pillars of this concept of appetite mastery, I need you to try to figure out where do you think is the area that you're having the hardest time with. Okay, and I'm going to give you some kind of ideas on how to speak to those in this video, but really, you know, it kind of takes your own work as well to build up your own toolkit of appetite mastery. One last thing to know before I give you the system is that this area right here in the brain, this is kind of the central processor when it comes to appetite. This is something called the hypothalamus, and this is the area of the brain that receives the majority of signals with respect to appetite, and it also kind of integrates this signal and tells kind of our, ourselves to eat. It's a drive center. And this drive center that drives us to want to eat is constantly receiving signals from all over the body. And also, given that what we see in our external environment is interpreted through our brain, it's also receiving information from kind of outside of the body as well, from our external environment as well. And the reason I bring this up is that some people think that appetite has to do with like your digestive tract and like how full you feel, like what's in your system. And it does in part, but there's other things that can have an effect on appetite that don't necessarily have to do with what's going on in the digestive tract. And so appetite mastery is about controlling, modifying some of the signals that are coming into the brain to make those signals more potent at promoting kind of that healthier appetite. Whereas a lot of the signals we're currently sending to our brain are ones that promote appetite. Okay, so we want to kind of fix these signals, and that is what appetite mastery is about. Okay, so here we go. Here are the five main pillars of appetite mastery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and one of the first ones, which is really important, it kind of come back, comes back to that fact that our, you know, parts of our brain communicate with the appetite center of our brain is that our thinking patterns, our cognitive brain, our like logical brain, our thinking brain, as I like to call it, communicates with the drive to eat. And that can affect, you know, our, our desire to eat. So one of the things you really want to examine is, are your thinking patterns promoting negative relationships with food? Are your thinking patterns 
structured in a way where you're thinking about food all the time or you're restricting food too much and you're thinking about like oh i can't eat this i can't eat this this is bad food this is good food okay i can only eat bad good food i can't eat bad food if i eat bad food then i'm bad is the storyline in your brain one where you're constantly focusing on food or is it one where you're moralizing food too much and what we have to be careful when we do this is that it creates a negative relationship with food, with, which might actually promote more appetite. So what I suggest with respect to your thoughts is really catch your thoughts. See when your thoughts are creating negative relationships with food, moralizing food, or uh, obsessing about food, or over-restricting food and thinking about it all the time, or telling yourself negative things about your body and yourself and creating a negative relationship with yourself. We've got to stop that. Because this is one of the things that's going to make us not feel great. <laughs> and in a lot of cases, what we put our attention to is where our behavior flows. So if you're constantly thinking about food, that's where your attention goes as well. And your behavior often follows your attention. Okay. So with respect to your thinking patterns, I want you to become aware of them. I want you to become aware of the, the narrative self of the like thought patterns and stories you tell yourself. And then when you have these stories or these thought patterns that are, you know, not helpful, I want you to see them, recognize them, and then maybe take a pause take a step back, take a breath sometimes, and then challenge those negative thinking patterns with honestly kind common sense. <laughs> and that's one of the things that's going to help you ameliorate your thinking patterns so they don't provoke more of a desire to eat beyond what you actually want. Okay, this takes work, but I'm just giving you a summary of the system right now, but there's way more to this than that. Okay. Something else that's really key to appetite mastery is emotional regulation. You have heard of the term emotional eating. A lot of us eat not because we're physically hungry or even because we kind of want to eat. It's more because we are trying to feel a different way. We don't feel good. There's something that we don't want to focus on or that we feel sad about or you know we just feel not so great for whatever reason and we use food as a coping mechanism it's so often used as a coping mechanism some people use drugs some people use gambling <laughs> lots of other kind of dependencies as well but a lot of us use food to help to feel better when it's really an emotional thing that we need to focus on okay and with this one there isn't necessarily a simple solution but it might help to talk with someone, a professional that can help you reprogram the way you think and interpret your emotions. It might also help to be kinder to yourself and more compassionate with yourself and say nicer things to yourself and give yourself a break every once in a while. Okay. Again, this is a big topic, but again, I'm just trying to give you the, the basics of the system. But this is a big one. <laughs> Emotional regulation is a big one because when our, you know, emotions are running wild, we might be more likely to run to food to help soothe that. Okay, so again, part of the process of healing this is becoming aware of the emotional triggers that are causing you to seek out food and distractions instead of maybe sitting with your emotions and your feelings and trying to process what they're trying to tell you and focusing on things that make you feel good. Okay, so number two, emotional regulation, key to appetite mastery. Another thing we have to talk about is that there's actually ways to eat that help promote lowering of appetite and more of this feeling of fullness. Currently, the way we're eating tends to promote our desire to eat more. Okay, so a diet that's high in processed foods, so think of foods with like a lot of added sugars, a lot of added fat, a lot of added sodium, come in brightly colored packages. <laughs> those are those processed foods, they seem to not be able to trigger that feeling of fullness like more whole foods. Okay, when we eat more whole foods like real foods, when we eat foods that are higher in protein, when we eat foods that are higher in fiber, when we eat foods that are more have more volume to them as well, when we eat more slowly, when we pay attention when we eat, all of these things help to send proper signals back to our appetite center so our brain can properly note that it is full. 
okay? So we want to hack food intake for appetite mastery, okay? And I had to, and I kind of had to think of a good way of putting this term, but another important part of appetite mastery is environmental sovereignty. Sovereignty means that you are kind of the ruler, <laughs> not the other way around. And for a lot of us, our environments, which are often full of food, which are often have tons of cues, advertisement, pop-up ads, you know, brightly colored packages as well, you know, discounts for food. They're around us all the time. That's just like a trigger. Eat, 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 eat all the time. <laughs> and no wonder we want to eat all the time when we're processing that, processing that information through our thinking brain and our emotional brain and our memories and our reward systems as well. And we're thinking, oh, I want to eat this thing or there's a reward out there. So we have to be able to recognize the cues in our environment that are promoting our desire to eat. We have to recognize those cues and then be discerning. Be like, oh, I know you're trying to get me to buy more. Oh, I know you're trying to get me to buy this product, you know, by putting it right in my, in my face, but I'm not going to fall for that. That's environmental sovereignty. Okay. And while we can't do a lot about our environment that's more external, we can do a lot about our environment that's closer to us. So you can do things around your home, for instance, that's going to help lower the amount of cues that make you want to eat a lot, maybe and enhance the kind of cues that make you eat the foods that, that you feel better about. Okay, so for instance, you know, <laughs> I have a hard time controlling my intake of ice cream. <laughs> I love ice cream and I don't deny it to myself. But if I keep it in the house, I'll eat it every night and I'll eat a lot of it every night. So environmental sovereignty for me or part of that in my, my home environment means that I don't bring ice cream into the home. Okay, I do eat it, I go out to eat it, but I know that if it's in my face, I'm gonna eat it a lot. So I try to control those visual cues so my desire to eat isn't always kind of on, on high. <laughs> so environmental sovereignty, super important to appetite mastery, okay? As are your relationships. Your friends and family, your co-workers, the people around you can have a huge effect on your desire to eat. I am someone that's very influenced <laughs> by other people. And if I see other people eating, I'm like, what are they eating? What are you eating? <laughs> can I have some? <laughs> right? What is that? Oh, that looks good. You know, it makes, it's, it's another stimuli. It's another cue that my brain interprets and it's like, oh, maybe I should eat that thing. Right? So, what I would say with that, with other people, is really watch your response. See how other people affect your desire to eat. Is watching other people eat making you want to eat? Or are there people around you that make you feel kind of crappy? And these people that make you feel kind of crappy leave you feeling emotionally unwell and that emotional not so wellness <laughs> is something that's making you want to eat more how are the people around you affecting you really with with friends and family and with your relationships you really want to stand in your own power and this takes work as well but we don't want to let the people around us dictate what we do for ourselves, especially if it's something in a way that's not necessarily in line with our own desires. Okay, so a really good place to start with your relationships is see how other people affect your desire to eat. Okay, are they messing with your emotions? <laughs> are they making you feel bad about yourself? Are they bringing food all the time and that makes you want to eat? Okay, and again, then you want to devise a plan. Okay, how am I going to deal with these things? And you also want to work on, like I mentioned, feeling really strong and aligned and grounded in your own power so other people have less of a likelihood to affect your decision making and you can make decisions that you want to make for yourself that feel good. Okay, so those are the five pillars of appetite mastery. And everyone's going to maybe, let's say, struggle with one or two of these more than the other. And what I would really recommend for you is to figure out what is it? What is it? What's kind of the big thing? Or which of these is probably going to be maybe the easiest for me to change or the most realistic for me to work on changing? And I would say start there. Start by figuring out what's really driving my appetite 
which of these or which combination of these is really driving my appetite and how can I start to realign that so I feel a lot healthier okay uh, there's no way I can explain all of this in a in a YouTube video pretty quickly right but I wanted to give you an overview of the system so you realize how many things can affect your desire to eat so you can start feeling more confident about controlling the things that are under your control and feeling more powerful in and around you know your your sovereignty with your decision making and with your your food intake as well okay so when we do master these things and it's taken me a long time to master these things but it feels amazing <laughs> when you do i'm not special for mastering them you can do it you can 100 percent do it yourself as well and I need you to realize that it's 100% possible for you to feel like a master of your appetite and to feel that you are having a good relationship with your body. It is 100% possible for you and it feels fantastic. I promise. <laughs> so I recommend, like I said, figuring out which of these things is really driving the shit for you. Okay, and then trying to work on tweaking that. I'm going to talk more about each of these things in following videos. I also have a free ebook that kind of discusses these a little bit more. And if you'd like to learn more about this, please subscribe to this channel or like this video, comment, or check out what off check out below this video what offerings I currently have because I really want to lead people through this process as well. And sometimes we need a little bit more of guidance to help us figure out you know what's going to work best for us. Okay, so pleasure chatting with you today. My name is Deanna Padoya, and I wish you a fantastic day.